Many people are too scared to do the high fat, low carb diet when they have heart disease like coronary artery disease or atrial fibrillation. But that's not what I told my dad. My dad is one of a dynasty of farmers from South Dakota known for an inappropriately strong work ethic, so much that it would make a Navy SEAL blush. In his elder years, he developed kidney failure that then led to heart problems. One of those heart problems was atrial fibrillation, and it was a nightmare for him because he lived so far away from a medical facility. As his kidney failure would get worse, it would cause the heart problems to get worse, and this cycle was a nightmare for keeping him out of the hospital. Whenever somebody watches my channel that has atrial fibrillation, it doesn't take long for them to write in saying, hey, is keto okay for me to take while I have this heart problem? Would it make it worse or better? All right, yes, I grew up on a farm where we butchered chickens and the first heart I ever touched was from a chicken. That matters because it's a very similar organ in our bodies, although not the same as a chicken. That bottom chambers are very meaty and strong, but the top chambers are more like a bag of muscle that's collecting the blood. And when that bag gets stretched from other medical problems like high blood pressure, lung problems, and kidney problems, that stretched out muscle stops doing its job right. The electrical conduction that's supposed to run through the top chamber of the heart to make the bottom chamber fire, it starts to misfire. It misfires because you stretch out the muscle and now those nerves don't touch anymore and they start to hop around and do their own rhythm. We call this atrial fibrillation, this electrical storm in the upper chambers of the heart, and it's deadly. It can cause a stroke and it can cause a heart attack. So back to my dad. When atrial fibrillation hit my dad's heart, he went from a heart rate around 70 beats per minute to one that was north of 160 beats a minute. He knew instantly that something was wrong and he was in danger. Of course, he called me and I said, call the ambulance, I'm 100 miles away from you. And that ambulance was able to see, oh my goodness, he is in this electrical storm. The real key to AFib is the quicker you get it to go away, the better. Lucky for my dad, he knew instantly when it started. And that ambulance ride was enough to shock him right back into normal rhythm. And before he even got to the hospital, it was gone. But this kept happening. And I taught him a few tricks to say, there are ways that you can abort this on your own in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota. The first thing my dad wanted to know was, how do I get rid of it? But I wanted him to focus on, how do you prevent it from showing up in this advanced medical case? Yes, kidney disease, kidney failure, a stretched out heart, high blood pressure, several other problems going on in his case. I wanted the volume of blood in his circulation to stay stable. And the best way to screw that up was to add a bunch of carbohydrates. When he was following the rules of a ketogenic diet, the circulating volume in his body was stable. But as soon as he would screw up and add a bunch of carbohydrates, the volume of blood increased, which increased his blood pressure, and boom, he was back into AFib. It was a terrible tell. <laughs> he couldn't get away with one stinking cheat before mom and I both knew, hey, what did you just eat? Unfortunately, as his diseases progressed, it was the slightest of increase in blood sugar that would send him into AFib. And we got quite good at the home remedies that I would never teach a patient, but I did teach my dad to do for his AFib. The nerve that controls your heart rate is called the vagus nerve, and it runs between your brain and your heart. There is a special place you can find it in your neck, right near your carotid artery. There's an old school remedy that is not used in modern medicine, but this old school remedy was to massage the carotid artery enough to stimulate that vagus nerve and reset the rhythm of the heart. Well, before I tell you the rest of that story, let me tell you why you shouldn't do this at home. The people who need carotid massage have lots of medical issues, ones that you and your doctor should work through. And by playing with this at home, you can actually cause a stroke, you can cause another arrhythmia in your heart, none of which I want you to do. So in my dad's case, his AFib presented with a super rapid heart rate, one that required within minutes to get him out of that heart rate. Yet he lived in the middle of nowhere, literally a hundred miles from the intervention team that would be needed to fix this. So out of necessity, I taught him 
how to stretch out his carotid. The first time we did this, my mother FaceTimed me and said, what do I do? His heart rate's 160. I said, turn him upside down. <laughs> put his head on the floor, put his butt up on the couch and get him as upside down as he'll let you. And as he sat there, face turning red, it was stretching his carotid artery over the next few minutes. Now, this didn't quite get him out of the rhythm, at which point I added the step where I needed a carotid massage. I needed her to push on that carotid artery. In fact, she couldn't push hard enough. He had to push on it himself in order to get that heart rate out of the 160s back down into his normal rhythm of 70s. For those of you that have typed the messages about, please answer my question about AFib, the reason I'm not doing it is because it's super complicated. By the time you're writing in to me about AFib, by definition, you have several other medical problems that must be in your history. And in that case, you should be talking to your doctor about it, not following the advice that I personally gave to my dad in that acute situation. So when my dad and patients ask me, can I get rid of this AFib? Can I reverse it and make it go away? My answers start with, here's some things that make it more likely. Number one, the stability of your blood sugars in your circulation highly correlates to how much volume of fluid is circulating. And that is a big predictor that triggers these atrial fibrillation attacks. But number two is if you're trying to reverse a scar anywhere in the body, you've got to be hitting an autophagy stage. And we talk a lot about that on this channel. But the most important thing that you can do today and something you should be monitoring in conjunction with your doctor is the control of your blood pressure. And I talk all about that in this next video. I'll see you there.